Hello there and welcome to the Woodstock Rostock Delta Printer. Just posted this up on Thingiverse. Now it's printing. And just want to go over some things. Basically we have laser cut 12 millimeter or half inch Baltic birch plywood panels, which are interlocking three millimeter hardware. And the laser cut panels are sized to hold three eight millimeter pairs of smooth rods. These are eight millimeter uh, tool steel drill drill rod, I believe it is, and driven by three steppers. So we got the X, Y, and Z axes. And you can see this is mostly a 3D printed and laser cut printer. All right, right now we're printing PLA, using that to make more printers. Here's a complete set of plastic for yet another printer with our ever popular Elmer's glue stick in the middle. So this is one set here of the main components which are stationary, holding the eight millimeter rod in place. We got the stepper motor holder, and then the top end stop mount and support. And then above that, we have a uh, uh, pillow block or bearing block for the idler. And then let's show you each one of these things. So we have the stepper motor attached to the bottom. Go up the rods to the end stop. End stop with the mechanical switch. And above that, we have the pillow block the idler which has a 608 ZZ skate bearings for the GT2 belts and then the carriage which moves up and down on the rods uses IGUS polymer bearings so they're very quiet and this uh, carriage is a modified Thingiverse design which has uh, two separate uh, GT2 holding areas and if, I don't know if you can see it but they are they are joined there so we can use an open belt cut to length and then just jam them in the in those little slot, slots there and tighten it by raising up you loosen these four bolts and you raise up the idler and that tightens the belt and then those are, <clears throat> the moving carriages have magnet balls with carbon fiber rods, approximately 250 millimeters. They're all the same length. I think these are 254 millimeters. I find a little bit longer than 250 works better. Um, and you can see the magnets on the circular effector there. And the effector, the big breakthrough on this thing is it's direct drive using a E3D Titan, highly recommended. It's a very reliable extruder, and then for the hot end is an E3D V6 style. And we have a cooling fan on the hot end itself that runs all the time, and a parts cooling fan that runs after the first layer. Now, how do we keep these magnetic balls in place? We have tensioners, which are these strings, which are Spectra fishing line with a extension spring and that keeps the balls from popping out if they hit something on the bed though if you have a big goober in your print it will possibly pop out and right now we're driving this with a Hanukat Aztec X5 Mini V3 well that's a a lot of name there, but it's a nice it run smoothie wear, and the smoothie wear is being run through a Raspberry Pi running OctoPi. Here's the board for the here's the uh, printout for the driver. It's a single extruder driver, but it works really well. It's very smooth. It's a 32-bit ARM-based CPU. 
and it can handle the Delta kinematics, which get uh, kind of problematic with a uh, ramps type. In fact, we have another printer right over here, which is running good old ramps 1.4, but it runs, we have to run it slower um, because if we run it faster, it starts stuttering and that de deforms the print. So, uh, it takes about 30%, 40% longer to print the same thing on this printer as this printer. Um, but they take the same G-code, which is really nice. We're running a uh, Mark III RepRap style 260 millimeter heated bed. On this one we have a 10 inch mirror, which works very nice as the flat surface. And on this one I had bought a uh, borosilicate glass. This costs about five times, ten times as much as the mirror, so I'm going to use the mirrors in the future because I really see no difference in performance. It's only running to 60, 65 degrees, so I don't think the mirror is a problem with those temperatures. And there you have it. So right now we're using the printers to make more printers. The print on this one is actually a, a switch enclosure. I printed it already on the other printer. We're going to put, we're going to redo the electronic layout, clean up the wires, put the Raspberry Pi and the switches for controlling it on the side there. Let's see, we're running PLA. This is a newer, newer model type PLA. Runs a little higher temperature, 205 to 225. It seems a little more flexible. Um, if you look at the the clamp blocks, so I can do this very easily on the old PLA that I used to use. That would like crack if you tried to do that. And here you can see the uh, IGUS bearing mounted inside. And it gets squished down with the three M3 nuts and bolts. And then there's a magnet that just snaps right into place. And then they would ride this way in this direction. And that uh, set screw there, that becomes the the uh, end stop so that it goes up to the mechanical end stop and it's adjustable. I've got a set screw on there. I'm um, also using a MOSFET um, intermediate switch so that the power to the hot bed is not running through the controller. And I've got, you can see, little metal braces, four metal braces with the lower rear corners and at the upper middle, which holds the thing true and square. Prints very nicely. You can see, I think, how horizontal it is across the bed and has no trouble printing, you know, relatively large things all at the same time. And if you look at the squish on the, on the brim there, it's pretty even across the thing which means it's printing both the bed is level and the kinematics are such that it is able to calculate a straight line parallel to the glass panel. There you have it.